Hey guys, welcome back to our continuing coverage of the Chicago Comic and Entertainment Expo right here from Podcast Central. We have got an incredibly special guest here in the booth. Guys, you know him from Descender, Ascender, many other titles, Mr. Dustin Wynn. How's it going, man? It's great, man. <laughs> Big round of applause. We've already got a crowd and I'm only like two sentences in right now. Um, so, man, number one right off the bat, how's the con going? Oh, it's great. I haven't been back here in, uh, I think, like three or four years. And everything's changed when I got back. So yeah, yeah. well, if you'll if you'll indulge me for just a second, yeah, it's we a great show. we first met you in uh, New York Comic Con in two thousand. I want to say it was eighteen, maybe, and it absolutely we we didn't have this whole setup. But, yeah. but my, my wife Shauna and I was taking uh, photos yeah. and videos right there. We went over to your booth at New York Comic Con, and it was a religious experience to stand at your. Oh. First of all, you're the <laughs> nicest guy I'd ever met. Nicest right. guy, insanely nice, nice guy. I think it really well. Just <laughs> to be able to pick up. Those original watercolor pieces from Descender and actually thrummed through them just absolutely you, blew my mind. Thank you so uh, much. So huge thanks for being so awesome. <laughs> um, my first question, I know these guys have a lot of questions. They're massive oh, yeah. fans. Oh, don't get me um, started. The, God, the transition from uh, Descender to Ascender. How far into Descender did you guys know that you were going to continue the series um, uh, into what's now a completely different but totally awesome book. Yeah, it's really hard to say because um, Jeff and I, the way we work, is we let the book, it, it kind of develops organically. We'll, like, we'll do, Jeff will do, he'll write like, you know, five issues at a time and he'll write it all and then, um, you know, I start drawing it and then we kind of like fill out the book, see where it's going and it kind of, we kind of like go wherever it leads and um, with the transition into uh, Ace Center was uh, that one issue where Driller fell into the uh, the magic planet. That's what I call it. Yeah. Yeah. Sad issue. Yeah, but um, you know, goes there and then we're like you know we could really do more with this let's do so it, it yeah it kind of just happens organically and then we're like you want to keep drawing and that's the best part about like uh owning your own property is like you can do whatever the hell you want oh, yeah. whenever you want yeah. Mm-hmm. so yeah does that mean that you literally have no idea how many of these you're going to have to illustrate no 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 we we plan it out because we have to plan our life out okay. <laughs> so yeah um yeah we we kind of plan out uh you know far enough where we don't tie ourselves down, you know? Sure. So if you asked us last month, like, hey, how many issues do you think you're doing? I would say one thing. You asked me next month. We're like, you know what? It actually feels pretty good. We might go a little more or we might go a little less. But it really depends on when we want to. Like, it's the same thing with our page count. Some issues are 20 pages. Some issues are like 32 pages. Yeah. And um, the way we work, I'm like, dude, Jeff, just write whatever you need to to make a story that we can tell that's the way you want it. Yeah. That's good enough, you know. Like, if you need an extra five pages, do it, you know. And when he turns in the script, he, you know, I look at it. And he's like, you know, if you feel like you need to take anything out, you feel like you can achieve it with this much or that much more. Do it. And uh, it's the beauty of like true creator ownership, you know. So, yeah. yeah. So, so I mean, how did the the, the Descender uh, universe come? I mean, did, were you friends with uh, Jeff long before? Is this something you guys have been hashing no, out long I mean, before? Or? We just we knew each other from uh, uh, just Comic Con, just meeting each other, you know, at a. Uh, panels and you know we kind of had possible but but we all we both worked at vertigo so we kind of had like that connection and jeff was um he was wrapping up his contract with dc at the time and i was too and we were both like 13 15 years into dc so i mean right off the bat when you work with someone that has that kind of track record it's always on time this you know it gives you more confidence like hey i can do a creator own book with this guy and not worry about you know starving or you know not having stuff to draw and i'm pretty sure he saw the same way and we're both like uh you know we both have families and mortgages so that's the key <laughs> issue man when you got rent to pay that's the biggest motivation <laughs> tell me about it that's the deadline yeah yeah well, i mean to send something i recommend to absolutely ever we've been to many free comic book days and uh you know mothers bring their children and stuff like that and they come to us because they think that we know what we're talking about and they're like well what should i pick up and the first thing i always say is i give them the trade for descender and say look you're gonna love it your kids can love it everybody's Fantastic, gonna love man. it um the designs of the characters in descender um is this something you have always sort of been sketching because i mean the weapons are very unique uh with the glowing tips and stuff like they're that lazy, they're, aren't they? i mean they're great <laughs> they're great um, you know i just i think it's one of those things where you're every kid does it you know like growing up you just I mean, I'm not sure if every kid does, but like, you know, I would say, I don't want to be sexist, but most little boys like drawing guns Mm -hmm. and blasters and cannons, you know what I mean? And that's what I was into. And I grew up on a lot of like um, Transformers and Robotech. And uh, the tech that I, like, you know, you mentioned the tech and the designs are really, I, I, Jeff and I kind of click because we come from a time when um, things, technology looked like what they did. Like robots are big and clunky, you know, industrial machines are industrial size they're heavy they're full of gears and stuff like that um you know which is 
not to say that today's designs are bad, but it's a little different today with, you know, we have all the touch screen, everything is kind of like minimized, um, you know, everything looks clean and smooth, like, you know. Driller uh, looks like a drill. Yeah, driller. <laughs> so in that world, we try to, I at least I try to make everything. Driller real look, killer. Yeah, yep. <laughs> exactly what it does. You know, it's like, uh, it's the, the way I, I approach it is like, it's, everything is, should be like a brick. A brick does exactly what it is. It's a brick. You know, you can use it as a door stopper, maybe. But. That's very zen. We're yeah. gonna cut that for our show, by the way. <laughs> I wanna, I wanna back up for a minute and talk about your art style because it's unlike anything else, especially with your watercolors. How did you get into that? Because when I was growing up, I loved to draw. Yeah. I would, would never touch watercolors because I'd always make brown. I'd always mix the wrong <laughs> colors um, and screw it up. So you know where did that come from? It's just I grew up on a lot of like um, heavy metal magazine. Um, comics and stuff nice. uh, and I thought it was the norm back then yeah. because before there was uh, you know Photoshop most people did it even if it looks like Photoshop they were still doing it by hand mm -hmm. they were still laying down colors by hand like Alex Sinclair over at um, Wildstorm uh, he started that whole Photoshop thing for the entire studio and even when they were just learning Photoshop Alex would go in there and I would look at old he would still go in with markers and mm -hmm. lay down colors and everything you know um, so Growing up, I was, you know, from a time when I was reading a lot of uh, John Muth and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, Ken Williams and all the entire roster of, uh, you know, like, Mobius and stuff, you know, yeah. like, and they all did uh, stuff. And I thought it was the norm and I thought it was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. uh, and also for me, like when we jumped over, when I jumped over to Descender, it was easier, um, yeah. you know, because Photoshop, I love, I love the hell out of digital and Photoshop. But mm -hmm. the problem with me is that I love it so much i'll sit around i'll just play with the colors all day moving switches around yeah. i was like this is so great and next thing you know it's taking longer because you're just fiddling with it then with our pages like done is done you know like mm -hmm. with my like i have to move on a monthly deadline and sometimes it scans in it doesn't look right but i'm like you know done is done you color them you scan them you're done yeah i do a few touch-ups you know what i mean okay. i do pump up the um the saturation a little because um it helps a lot okay uh the line work and stuff it for legibility reasons mm -hmm. and of course i gotta go and clean out because when it scans, there's like all kinds of dust, and you should see a clean, uh, first scan page. It looks horrible. It's like there's dust on there, eraser rubbings, and I don't know what the hell's on my scanner. I'll, I'll take it. it. I'll take it. it. Yeah, I was gonna works. say if you're handing them out, like we'll take some. <laughs> I mean, with the Descender style and the the fact that it, you, you, when you scan it, you actually see the paper pulp. You yeah. See that? So so it almost yeah. kind of works. Yeah, that part I kind of liked it. I like that. Um, That's a good point. That paper the, with Descender, I used a, um, a code press, so it had more tooth to it, more texture. With Ascender, I because um, I wanted to do more organic stuff. And for me to come back and do line work, I have to use like a smoother paper, so I use a hot press, which is what I've been using for covers. Um, so it's a lot smoother. It's less forgiving though, because once paint's on, it's on. The other one, if it's on, you can kind of pull it out sometimes hmm. if you mess up. So, do yeah. you get to the end of a page and you're like, uh, I don't really love the way I started this first panel and I got to start the entire thing over again, or? <laughs> um, well, I, I kind of lay out everything first before I start painting it. So the way I do it is I, um, I draw the entire book in pencils first, and then I go back and I paint it. Um, scene by scene, depending on like <clears throat> the lighting for each one, and then when I'm done with that, I bring the whole batch back around. And then I go back with line work. So I'll go back and pencil it again, add you know whatever I need to, and then Photoshop brings in you know if I need, like you said the guns, the glows. Mm -hmm. um, it fixes a lot of things. Sometimes the face is a little wonky. Like uh, sometimes I draw the heads too big. Mm -hmm. um, I love your bat you know. your Batman heads are perfect by the way. <laughs> Thanks man. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like you know Photoshop technology helps everything. Sure. I mean, start to finish. What's what's a book take from pencil to uh, to paint to Photoshop? I mean, like time wise. Yeah, like uh, uh, you know, it depends on the issue and depends. Like, if you give me three months, I'll take three months. I, if, if you give me a month, then I guess I got to do it in a month. So yeah. it really, <laughs> no, I can't. It, it's like no self control over things. But um, some issues take a little longer, especially if we're developing new worlds. Um, but you know, when it's a page where it's like characters I'm familiar with. Um, and it's the same thing with DC stuff. Like when they hand me a cover and they're like, yeah, can you just do a Batman cover? You know, we got like two days. I was like, dude, I could do it by tomorrow. They will say, hey, can you do like a, you know, League of Legion or something? Mm -hmm. You got two weeks. I was like, dude, I'm going to need like three. <laughs> like, <laughs> really? Because you don't, you're not comfortable with the characters. Yeah. Um, I'm very comfortable in Gotham, but everything else is a little bit of a struggle for me. Yeah. Like, yeah. Who in the DC haven't you touched yet that you, uh, uh, artistically speaking, <laughs> um, that you uh, <laughs> might want to actually tackle one day. Um, there, there really isn't any, dude. I, I usually, like, the reason I haven't tackled them probably is because I didn't want to. Yeah. Um, DC's been very nice to me. They've offered me, they're like, you know, whatever you want to draw, you got it. You can just ask for it, basically, with DC. And they've been very kind. So if I haven't drawn it yet, it's pretty much because I have no interest in it. So hmm. Please keep drawing Spike from Cowboy Bebop. <laughs> keep, oh, my keep God. Keep pumping those out, yes. please. 
<laughs> Good yeah. lord. Uh, so we actually last year we talked about uh, Descender being optioned for a movie, right? And and your loose connection to that, like it, at least in in terms of character design, right? So has has that advanced at all? Or do, it actually still- has advanced a lot, but um, ah. we we are not. Actually, I just advanced last week, so without okay. giving anything away, I could say we have some big news coming up. You know? oh. When? when breaking <laughs> news know, coming up? Like You don't have to tell tomorrow? us what the news is. <laughs> yeah. Just tell us no. when we can expect it. Uh, you know, working with VR right now, so it's okay. No, we wanna, you know, we want to. I want to do it right. Can you so. tell us what studio you're no, working with? No. Absolutely no? not. <laughs> no, That's but no, okay. it's, just it's it could not be that at all. It could be just like, hey, a big character's coming back, you know. Okay, so, knowing that there is news is enough for me. Yeah, so we appreciate that. We're on to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, I don't know if you have anything else. Um, this has been absolutely spectacular. Dude, thank you. We so just really appreciate man. your time, Dustin. No, thanks thank for you. like you know com- keeping a spot for me because I know I was like, oh, I don't know if I can get back here because I don't really know my when I travel. I don't know what my schedule is like, you know, like at the booth or here. How dare you, Dustin? I'm sorry. How dare you? A little background, Dustin and I were talking via Instagram, right. and I asked if he could come by, and he's like, conventions are crazy, of course. And he's like, I'll do my best. And lo and behold, you did his best. You he did his work. best. No, thank we you. Really for appreciate it. Thank you so much. That yeah. says Podcast Central is shining like the sun this is here, a beautiful just setup, south man. of uh, Artist Alley. Uh, well, thanks. We can't thank you enough for coming by. No, thank, uh, thank we know you how crazy guys. you are. Where are you going next? What's your next con uh, stop? Uh, I'll be in Emerald City, uh, yeah? uh, Seattle. You guys going to be out there or no? We're not. Okay. Our next stop is going to be Boston Northeast. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice, nice. So, yeah. yeah. Next one's Seattle and then uh, WonderCon and AwesomeCon and, of course, San Diego. That's mandatory. So. Awesome. Well, can't thank you enough, man. You absolutely made our day. Uh, thank you guys. Dustin Wynn, everybody, give him a big round of applause. <laughs> Shauna. Thank you. Hey, Dustin, you missed some great stuff. One last question. Yeah. <laughs> Your big cartel store, I recommend everyone going to his big cartel oh. store for his original artwork. Are you going to do another scavenger hunt? Because I was a lucky winner Christmas time last year oh, right. when you started posting. I might, man. I, the problem ran problem I ran into that with uh, was the site would start. Um, like, I, I would only have one piece, and the site yeah. would just ring up seven pieces. And then I'd have to go uh, back and apologize to people. Hey, you didn't get that. You weren't the first one. So he would hide oh. artwork on his big cartel store online and be like, I'm giving this i'm putting what you'd yeah. so price you price it at one, zero huh? i got one oh, yeah dude, i was great. the first one to add it to my cart and what? get it and you nice. shipped it to me so i have some of his original artwork just from winning it on your big cartel store that's cool, i'm man. sitting next winning. to a winner i got have it. no idea <laughs> winning i saw that pun <laughs> well guys uh we got a lot of more uh, amazing chicago comic and entertainment expo coverage coming up all weekend long we're gonna be here all day tomorrow so stick around right here on the chump cast on the youtube channel chuckle of comics and we'll see you here Next time, see you around the con floor. Have a fantastic con. See you later.